Hi there. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of Unitron Astro cameras from the 1950s or 60s. This is the Unitron 220A and the very unique and very rare Unitron 220B. Okay, let's start with the Unitron 220A. The 220A is set up to go into a Unitron focuser. Um, you can probably not, you probably can't tell, but this is designed to slide into a Unitron uh, draw tube. And this is the 220B, which is designed to fit into a an inch and a quarter draw tube. And this will fit in any standard inch and a quarter telescope uh, that we that you can find. Um, so that's the distinct difference. The cameras, as far as I can tell, are completely identical. Everything is, uh, the operation is exactly the same. The only difference is these uh, fittings. Okay, so here comes the 220A out of its box. And first of all, uh-oh, it's broken. These are always broken. What happens is that these poor old, I don't know what they made these out of, I think it's just a classical traditional rubber, and it, boy, it decomposes rapidly within 10, 15, 20 years perhaps, these are shot. So they almost always, well, I've never seen one of these. Actually, this one does work, I think, still. But I, I you don't see these that work. You hardly ever see them intact. Sometimes they're just powder. Um, no big deal because there's another device. This is a device that you squeeze and it uh, effectively opens or closes the shutter, opens and closes the shutter. Uh, on the camera. I'll show you that in some close-ups. Anyway, these are always shot. No big deal. Here's the box from one of those. And this was replenished sometime within, I, I think that's the box for this one. This was replenished sometime within the last 15 or 20 years because this one is still, I think, functional. I should probably show you that because it may only function for one or, one or two more squeezes. So maybe I'll show you that in a close-up. Okay, so here's the camera. And the camera is an arcane looking thing. This is called a Thornton Picard shutter. I'll show you a close up of that. In the back, it's got a beautiful, beautiful wooden uh, casing. And a, a, this is a ground glass screen for focusing. This is one of the uh, three film holder cassette kind of deals. Each of these is capable of taking two uh, pictures. And so therefore there are two uh, slots here. And the way you would take a picture in this thing is pretty darn strange. You put this in the back, this slide opens up, and then there would be film in here, and you would expose it and slide this very, very, very old-timey, charming, quirky. Uh, so anyway, I'll show you some close-ups of those. Let me show you how this draw tube thing works. First of all, this has got some complications. There are some, some things going on here. First of all, it has this tube. That tube's got a little tube inside of it. This tube goes in here. So that screws onto the camera like so, and then the camera goes in the telescope. Now you can use it just like this. This is prime focus. As long as you have enough back focus in your telescope tube, which many of the Unitrons I have used have probably enough back focus. You have to be able to reach focus all the way back here. That's a considerable chunk of back focus. Um, and some of them will. I think I have some telescopes, Unitrons, that will not do that. But I believe they designed most of them, especially the four inches, to have plenty of back focus, uh, which would mean they have a normally they'd have a nice long draw tube on them, but they have to have plenty of back focus to do prime focus photography. Well, in case you couldn't do prime focus photography, and because the image is so small, what you would do is use uh, this device. Now, this device, this is basically this is just a um, a 0.965 eyepiece. It's a 30 millimeter and you can use a standard Unitron eyepiece in here instead. 25 or 30 millimeter or even shorter. 
but this is designed for what's called eyepiece projection. And this lens goes inside here, like so. Now, because of the position of that lens, if you put this in the telescope, it probably will not focus. Then you need even more back focus. And that's why they designed this. And this has both of the clamps. This is rare. <laughs> you almost always see these with only one of the clamps. These two clamps go on here. And the two clamps, uh, first of all, this is pretty heavy. So when this thing goes in the telescope, it's going to want to slide out. So you clamp it down like so. This goes in the draw tube, and this has a matching clamp for the unitron. So that all clamps on nice and sturdy so that the thing will stay on the telescope. And then, of course, you've got the problem of rebalancing the telescope. Uh, you're going to have to slide it forward or balance it somehow because this is going to be a pretty heavy mass on the back end of the scope. I'll show you a shot of that on an actual telescope. So uh, that's the reason for all the complexity with all this stuff. Uh, another reason for the eyepiece projection is because the image that shows up back here on this piece of film is not very big when you use prime focus. The, the image is actually, the image circle is actually pretty small. It doesn't uh, even really reach the corners of the film. So they would use the eyepiece projection to try and fill up this, uh, boy, that's a sizable piece of film there. You could get some really nice, juicy astrophotos, at least theoretically, with that size uh, film. Show you this one, show you that it's uh, exactly the same thing. Uh, film holders and the whole bit is all the same. And this, of course, is uh, the same kind of an eyepiece projection deal. The difference is that this is an inch and a quarter tube, and it's got a special adapter here so that it screws on. So there's your inch and a quarter, and you could use this, if you have enough back focus with your telescope, you could use this with an inch and a quarter telescope. Um, and I've even, uh, I've, I'm going to show you a couple of videos of both, uh, of, the, of the camera in both configurations set up using this actual uh, inch and a quarter device. Okay, here I have the Unitron camera set up. And you can see an image of the sun there on the screen. You can probably see clouds rolling through. You can see this white stuff here. And there's this little obscuration on the sun itself. It's not an eclipse, it's just clouds rolling through and you can see that happening. Okay, now I've got it with the eyepiece projection system. See, I'm, t I'm touching the scope and I'm causing it to shake a little bit as I focus. So I'm focusing. You can see the limb of the sun getting sharper. There's focus right about there. I'm now just tracking a little bit. The reason it's green is because I have the green filter in there, which is you're supposed to use that. Now there's some spots and some uh, defects on the ground glass, but you can see the limb of the sun there gets pretty sharp. There it's defocused, sharp, defocused again. Pretty tricky operation, but you can focus this. And this, the, the, those are spots on the ground glass. That's nothing, <laughs> nothing in outer space. No aliens coming in. Uh, so it's the same exact thing. 
Everything is exactly the same. There's one very interesting complexity here. Um, Unitron was not used to working with inch and a quarter. And this extended draw tube here, see the, the kind of funky clamp it's got on it? They kind of, it's not really funky. Nothing Unitron did was really what you would call funky. But, but it's strange looking. It's got three little set screws to go on there. Just strange little device. Then this thing clamps down. And now you've got a nice sturdy uh, setup there. So uh, it's a little bit different than that. And it also did not come with a clamp for the front because it would be assumed that you have a draw tube, an inch and a quarter draw tube with some sort of a clamping device uh, or whatever up here. Uh, before I destroy it, I wanted to show you how this rubber bulb actually functions. First of all, this is how you wind this thing. Let's see. I don't use this on a daily basis. And there's ways to set the timing and all that. Basically, what happens is when you squeeze the bulb, it's going to move this thing. And that's going to release the shutter. And there's supposed to be a timer involved. You can actually move this so that you get a bulb shutting uh, setting like that. Uh, and you can also set it so that it has a timer and there's a, a device here on the bottom where you set the time for it. Supposedly it's old time mechanical stuff. I don't think this is accurate to a nanosecond people. Uh, it's probably accurate to I don't know, a few seconds, maybe. Um, anyhow, so it's uh, maybe not all that precise. I mean, it was precise for the day. Let's see if I can actually make this thing work. See if the bulb actually works. This may be one of the few times you'll ever see one of these, and it may work three times, two times, maybe only once. Let's see if it works, shall we? Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> Let's see if I can try it on this setting. It worked! <laughs> oh my goodness uh, okay so let me show you another technique for making this work and that is uh, assuming the bulb is shot which most of them are you can put a standard good old mechanical like that I hope you can see that on, on frame let's see if that I can make that work. Okay, here we go. Good. Okay, now let's try it with the bulb setting. And by bulb I mean, so you push it down and then you have to do something else to release it the second time. And let's try it. That's the bulb setting. Okay, here is a film holder. And this has a couple little latches here. Like so. And you open this up. And inside you find a couple of things. First thing, you find one of these little plates. Now this holds a sheet of film. It's about two by three. There's some precise measurements, but it's about a two by three. I think you could also use glass plates in there if you wanted to. Um, anyhow, so that's, that's one of them. There's another one stored back here with a nice little latch to hold it, keep it in. And you would have to load this film, of course, in a dark room. So you're handling all this film in a dark room, load it all up, put it in the little things, seal all of this up like so. Close this up. It's got a couple little latches there. The idea is to keep it nice and light tight until you're going to take it out and expose it. And then when you expose it, you're going to open this thing and then there's the film right back there. But before you do that, you have to put it in the camera. So here's how this works. Now this has a latch here to open the ground glass. First of all, you focus it with the ground glass. The ground glass is ostensibly at the same location that the film plane is going to be. I'm not sure how accurate that was, but that's the, that's the hypothesis. So there's a couple little latches here on the side 
these little latches are locks to hold this thing in. Once you get this thing in, now we're, suppose we're going to expose film sheet number five. We'll put five in there. Slide it in there. Close these little gizmos. I've got it focused, theoretically. Now I, I open this so that the film can now see what the camera sees. So now I've got this thing set up so that it's actually doing a photograph if there was film in there. Now, after you're done with that, close this down. Filled with the little latches. Oh my goodness, Unitrons are always so fiddly. Lots and lots of little things. Reverse it. Do the whole process again. The latches, yada, yada, yada. Same thing. And you could do that six times with the three film containers in there. Six exposures on this film. Well, that's everything you need to know about how to operate your Unitron 220 camera. Hope you've enjoyed my tour of these two Unitron 220 cameras. Thank you very much.